In the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Amen. Happy Easter! I think you all will appreciate it. I can rarely get through an Easter without thinking of Julie Graham exuberantly proclaiming all of the Christ is risen. Nobody can compare to that. <laughs> so it makes me think of our priests who have been here, who are, have moved along, and because this gospel with Thomas in it. So we are here on the second Sunday of Easter and celebrating that it does last 50 days. So I appreciate you all, the more intimate crowd we have here than we did last that Sunday, for gathering. And for gathering on the sacred moment where Jesus comes into the room. But it starts with the doors are locked. The doors are locked for fear of the Judean authorities. Remember, it was the chief priests who handed Jesus over to be crucified. Pilate said again and again, I find no blame. I don't know what you're doing here. And so it is those authorities, his disciples still a little dense, and I think many of us can relate to that, wondering what has happened. All that they left their entire lives, left everything to follow this person. And you'll remember two weeks ago, that triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The Messiah that they had been waiting for for generations and generations, they thought had come. But God does what God does, the unexpected. And so, they're terrified. When I was at the ripe age of 17, thinking about ordination to the priesthood, my little sister said to me, but you're the biggest doubter I know. And I said, yeah, probably am. Yeah. Oftentimes, Thomas has been maligned for his doubt. But before Thomas is there, the doors are locked, and somehow Jesus comes into the room. In the face of all grief, trauma, hopelessness, Christy Glendale said it well in her words about her father yesterday. Without this person here, how can the sun come up? How can life go on? How are people just riding down the road and going about their business? How do we eat food or sleep? The disciples who have been following Jesus, what's next? And Jesus comes into the midst of them and says, Peace be with you. That peace that we share every week. Peace be with you. And he shows them, right? Yeah, it did happen. So they see. So who can blame Thomas? And so Thomas says, unless I see and touch the most incarnational way of being, our senses, unless I use my senses, and so again, this time, Thomas is there. And Jesus comes into the midst of them and says, Peace be with you. And Thomas immediately proclaims Jesus is God. He doesn't touch. He doesn't need to. My Lord and my God. My God is here. Suddenly the light can shine through. Hope can spring again. And Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit on them. Breathes the Holy Spirit and says, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. You who are witnesses must go forth into the world. In our Episcopal tradition, we have, most of you know this, but we have to consecrate a ordain a bishop. You have to have three bishops, at least. There's usually a lot more. Lay their hands on that person. When people came from England in the church to the U.S., they had to have bishops come over from Scotland. 
to make our first Jewish bishop. To be ordained a priest or a deacon, you have to have at least one bishop lay a hand on you as you make your vows. And the reason for this is what's called the apostolic succession, that that touch goes back to the apostles. That touch goes back to this moment in the room where Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit upon them and says, you are to go forward. Peace be with you. And then he talks about belief. And those of us who are like here in modern Western world think, I don't know if I believe some of this. It's not the kind of belief, the thinking belief that Jesus is talking about. He's talking about abiding with God, journeying, believing into. But some days we believe, some moments we don't. Some moments our sisters call us out on being doubters. And it's calling us to abide with God, to journey and show up for community <clears throat> together. That when one of us or another is doubting or has an absence of that, that we journey together. So he sends people forward. And the Gospel of John is written in the context of after this time, 100 or so, 150 years after this time, where people are experiencing persecution that we've heard about in the Acts of the Apostles, where the chief priests are again saying, we told you not to say this name. It's very Harry Potter-like. He who shall not be named. He who shall not be named in our gospel or in our acts of apostles is the person of light and goodness and love and healing and community and connection. So they tell the chief priests with very real threat, we answer to God. And so Jesus comes into the midst of us today to say, peace be with you. Many of us take on Lenten practices, and I always invite us into Easter practices. But as we're going about in the world, having that little, like, kind of secret of, like, God's love and light and goodness, that we carry with us those words, peace be with you. Someone cuts you off on the road, peace be with you. Somebody doesn't hold the door for you, peace be with you. So I invite us into this Easter practice of abiding with God and offering the peace that passes all understanding to others. Amen.